registered as dance centres across the world. I look after around about five, six hundred centres or so in about 40 countries, Nigeria being one of those. Um, I've been with ASDAM for about 15 years, which uh, feels like a very long time now. It really does. Um, the purpose of the talk today is, is, is just to sort of describe ASDAM's approach to um, helping young people with special educational needs to hopefully live a, a better life, a life that includes independence and employment, hopefully. Um, we do this because we're an awarding organisation. So similar to an exam board, we are, we are an awarding organisation and a educational charity. Um, so we offer courses, curriculum courses for young people to work through, young people and adults actually to work through, to develop their skills, um, to, like I say, hopefully live a better life. Um, I did want to start just by talking about certificates, actually, and I'm I'm going to find it very hard to judge this, but um, I'd like you to humour me just for a just for a moment, and perhaps close your eyes if you'd like to, and think back to possibly when you was a child or a young person, when you received your first ever certificate. May have been a certificate, may have been a, a medal. If I was to think back, I was about seven years old, I think, and I received a certificate for the first time for a, um, a cross-country running event. And I just remember what that did for me in terms of my confidence and my, and my happiness. And anybody that came to my house um, following that time, grandparents, etc. It was the first thing I did was to show them this certificate. So think back to when you received your first ever certificate and just what that did for you. I hope you're thinking of a happy time and I hope that you're quite possibly smiling to yourself right now because it brings back a happy memory. So never forget that. Never forget what that feeling feels like and what you could do with a young person by um, awarding them with a certificate from, from ASDAN. We provide courses, lots and lots of courses, so many that I can't really talk about them all today. I am going to touch on a, on a few, but these are accredited courses that um, Kimberly alluded to earlier in her, in her speech. Um, ultimately, it's about young people taking part in these courses, developing skills, skills for learning, skills for life, and skills hopefully for employment. And the, the whole ethos here is that they receive certificates, accredited certificates for their efforts. So we are ultimately rewarding achievement and celebrating success. The, the, the strap line we're using at the moment is to engage, elevate, and empower young people particularly those in greatest need, which includes those with special educational needs and disabilities. I am going to share my screen. I've got a few slides that I'd like you to maybe take a look at. Hopefully you can see my, my PowerPoint. This is not a an extensive um, array of slides, by the way. It's just it's just a few, just to take you through um, a selection of courses that I've chosen to speak about today. What I will say is that we have got courses for just about any learner, and that will go from those with profound and multiple learning difficulties and complex needs to all of those um, learners in the middle, let's call them, the ones in the middle, right through to university entrance and curriculums for gifted and talented students. So we have something for everybody. Today is my, my focus is going to be on what we call the Preparing for Adulthood programmes. Preparing for Adulthood programmes is a, an umbrella term and, and beneath that umbrella are four courses which sit in um, in age groups from around about nine or so through to adulthood. So just briefly, for now, 
New Horizons is for the youngest ones from around nine or 10 years old. Um, I think it's a really nice course. Um, it has modules in there um, to help young people start to really understand about themselves and the, and the world around them. Transition challenge. You'll see here that there's two booklets. For learners who have prob more than likely profound and multiple learning difficulties, they might only be able to take part in a lot of activities, perhaps just using a sensory experience. So we have transition challenge sensory. More about that a little bit later. And for students probably with moderate or even severe learning difficulties, Transition Challenge, Introduction and Progression, where learners can take part in some practical activities. The big one. I have two books on my on my slide here, um, but there's actually over 70, seven zero, over 70 of these module booklets to help young people to develop skills. You'll see there, there's a starting out booklet. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail shortly. Um, and then there's all of the module booklets that go following on from starting out. The last one on my slide here then is Workright, and it's a really nice course. I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later, but basically it's there to develop some employability skills to help young people to move into employment. So in a nutshell, and I don't tend to read from slides, but the programs are activity based. They are all a portfolio based assessment as well. So there is no end of course exam, which can be a real barrier for young people with special educational needs. So no end of course exam. Learners will work through activities, collect evidence, Portfolio evidence might be something that, that they've written. It could also be things like photographs, witness statements that have been generated by their teacher, video evidence, of which I saw some fantastic video evidence just yesterday of a young person in Australia giving a presentation, really developing communication skills, and the school decided to capture that in, in, in video format, which was really, really nice to see. The programmes will also focus on the preparing for adulthood pathways. There are four of these. So it's about young people learning about their community. And I think that's really important. Learning about the community in which you live in terms of how you can be a, a good part of that community, a good citizen, but also knowing what's available to you in terms of services within your within, within your community. So community, number one, health, number two. So things like health and safety, so keeping healthy and keeping safe, but also things like health and hygiene, keeping healthy and keeping clean, and also learning about things like um, healthy foods, foods which are good for you. So health would be the second one. Independent living, which I think is fantastic. It's at the heart of um, a lot of these programmes. So learners doing all sorts of skill-based activities to live a more independent life. So things like cooking, um, understanding money, um, travel training, that kind of those kinds of activities. And the last one of the of the pathways would be employment. So learning how to understand what it is to be an employee. So perhaps understanding your rights and really importantly understanding your responsibilities as well. Ultimately, these courses will help a young person to work through life from being quite young, perhaps at the latter end of a primary school, through secondary and into adulthood. Help them to develop skills to live a better life. I always say that um, happiness is a, a huge thing in life. If someone is happy, then they're probably going to be happy to learn. And if they're learning, then they're going to thrive more. So happiness is a real big thing uh, for me, happiness and confidence in young people.
if you can develop that using our courses, using our activities, then a young person will hopefully live a better life, a life that is more independent and a life hopefully that includes employment as well. Now, we all know learners are hugely different. I've mentioned earlier, potentially a learner could have profound and multiple um, learning difficulties, perhaps moderate learning difficulties, perhaps severe learning difficulties, perhaps complex needs. You might look at two students who are very different and say to yourself or say to a colleague, how can these two very, very different learners both take part in the same course? How can they both do New Horizons? How can they both do towards independence? How can they both do work right? Well, they can. And the reason that they can both take part in the courses is because they will access the courses with different levels of support. And this will feature on that accreditation certificate at the end of the process. When they receive their certificate, the levels of support that they've used will feature there. So for learners who are probably quite able, all these learners will have special educational needs in one way or another. But as we know, some learners are very, very savvy in certain areas. I know a young boy who has autism and he struggles with a lot of things in life. But when you put him in front of a computer or an iPad, he's an absolute genius. He really is. He probably could teach me things, to be quite honest. Um, so if he were to do some modules within these courses that are ICT based, quite possibly you'd be able to note after the activities that he's had no help. He's been able to do that on his own. But more often than not, learners will have a level of support. So we have here, it's signed or spoken help. If you're giving verbal prompts to a learner, it's gestural help. If you're using gestures or hand signals, I saw a nice example of this just recently where a young person was working in a kitchen and learning how to make a hot drink. And the teacher said to them, the last thing you need to do is to stir the drink. And the learner just didn't quite understand what the teacher was saying with that spoken help. And so the, the teacher then made the gesture of stirring a drink and the learner was then able to complete the activity to be able to make their, make their drink safely. The next one, physical help is in sort of twofold, actually. Um, if you need to move things for a learner, pieces of equipment, for example, then you're offering physical help. Or if you need to help to move the learner themselves, for example, with many activities, a teacher may do a hand over hand um example of physical help. So if the learner needed that kind of help, then you'd be noting that they've had physical help. Then for more unfortunate learners, perhaps learners who can only take part using a sensory experience. I've put down what five here in, in, in the brackets. Um, I learned earlier that there's 12. Thank you for that one earlier. I really enjoyed that, that PowerPoint slide from the speaker. Um, but if they can take part in an, in an experience using hearing, touch, smell, taste, etc., then you can note that they have taken part in the activity, but through a sensory experience. And lastly, for a learner who is unable to take part in an activity in any way, but they are there, then you can note that they have had an experience recorded. And we would hope that they might just learn something from having that experience. So very different learners can all take part in these preparing for adulthood courses. First one to speak about then is, is New Horizons. Now, 
I, I'm going to do this briefly. I have I have one slide. I am going to show you actually where to find more information a little bit later. There's a couple of places today where you can find a little bit more information about ASDAN and the courses that we offer. New Horizons, a really nice course from around about the age of nine. If it was eight, that would be okay. This is a this is a guide. Our, our age ranges are are a guide, really. Um, it contains modules based around things like personal, social, and health education, citizenship, a little bit on careers as well. But a course where a young person can really start to understand themselves, their families what their families are, are doing in terms of their jobs and careers and, and, and what have you. And also a little bit in there about understanding relationships as well. That's New Horizons. Transition Challenge. So this one is sensory for sensory learners only. Um, we've moved on in age range now. They would be perhaps 14 to 16, but again, 13 would be okay. No problem with that. So if a learner has started out doing New Horizons, they could do New Horizons and then move on to Transition Challenge. Um, if they're already 14, then they would start with Transition Challenge. They wouldn't go back at doing the New Horizons course. But the sensory course, more than likely for learners with profound and multiple learning difficulties. And there's some really nice modules and activities within this course that learners can take part using a sensory experience. Same age range, but for learners with perhaps moderate learning difficulties or severe learning difficulties. This is a framework of activities, again, all, all kind of hands-on, hands-on learning, um and and lots of subjects this this book by the way just so that you're aware has over 200 pages of activities in it it's a it's a really vast book um five modules with 18 activities per module so so much to go at there really is so much that a learner can achieve from from working through transition challenge and like i said very nice practical activities The big one, um, this course currently is going through some um, development or redevelopment, I, sh I should call it. So we're revamping the Towards Independence course and it's gonna have a fresh new, a fresh new look and be brought into, into the modern day. But a learner who is gonna start to do Towards Independence would be from, from 14, but actually could be an adult as well, could be a young adult as well, no problem at all with, with that. They start using the starting out book. Now, I think it was um, Judy earlier that mentioned IEPs when, when she was giving her speech, individual education plans. Those IEPs will contain learning targets or learning goals. And you can map those into the, to into the Towards Independence course, into the starting out booklet, so that you can then start to choose the modules that the learner is interested in or that their families want them to do or that you as teachers want them to do. Um, never forget the learner in that one, by the way. We're all very good at, um, at telling people what's best for them, but actually it comes from the learner as well. And all of these courses, we really do put the learner at the center of the, uh, center of the process. So once we've made a plan in this starting out book as to what we want a learner to work towards, they will then work towards the modules of your cho of their choice. Remembering there are 70 plus of these modules. Just the one on screen there you can see is learners understanding how to get to know a group a little bit more, to become more social um, and to make friends. And again, it goes back to the the thing about being happy, doesn't it? Um, being more social hopefully will increase your friendship group and make a young person more happy. And a lot, like I said earlier, a lot can come from, from just happiness alone. 
The last one then. I really like this over the years. I've had a, a, a passion for work experience, work-related learning and work-based learning. Um, I think this is a really nice course. It is one book. Um, but a chance for learners to work through some modules, four modules in, in, in Workrite, to be able to start to understand responsibilities of being an employee, um, thinking about teamwork, and then actually applying some of these skills to some real work-based activities. That's the point of, of work, right? To try and teach some skills. And when we say transferable skills, if you think of developing communication or teamwork or problem solving or learning itself, actually, and your use of numbers, your, new, your, your use of ICT, these are all great skills which you can learn during the course, but then can be transferred to the workplace that the young person then goes on to, to join. Those are the four courses. Now, I promised you um, a little bit of information as to where you can find more information about these. Um, I'm going to have to stop sharing, I think, and then go to share again. This is the ASDAN website. Um, Please somebody shout up in the chat if you're not seeing the ASDAM website. This is what we've got at the moment. All right, now you've all met Kimberly earlier. Kimberly has some information in your venue. I, I must say, I, I would love to be there with you today. I, I would have really liked to have come and done this in person. It would have been amazing to come and, come and meet you all. Um, I will say, by the way, the enthusiasm in your room from your presenters is literally second to none. I'm, I'm slightly blown away by the enthusiasm that's in that room. It's really good. But look, here's where to find some more information about the courses I've spoken about and actually all of our courses. I'm just going to click here on membership. You can all do this on your tablets or your computers when you get home. In two clicks, you are on my ASDAN International page. And then just scrolling down a little bit, you'll see the courses which are available. Kimberly has a brochure there. Um, and if she's run out of brochures over the last two days, then we can always forward the brochure to you. We have it as a, as a, web, a web copy as well. But to find a little bit more information about the Preparing for Adulthood programmes, you can see here they are for students with special educational needs. You can go to the, to the web page. Clicking on the Overview folder will allow you to see the four course titles that we've just mentioned. All of these will then take you to the individual course page where you can find out more information about the courses. Now, this is a course that I said has lots and lots of modules, 70 plus modules here. Hopefully you're seeing now, it should come up. All of those 70 modules. So there are some really nice ones on personal development personal, social, and health education and citizenship. There's some really nice ones in here. And I'm like I said earlier, we are revamping these, these modules to bring them into a, a modern day. E-safety was written in 2016. Well, in the last eight years, a lot has happened online, hasn't it, with things like social media um, and use of devices as, as well. Um, Young people coming into this age group, 14, 15, 16, and, and into adulthood, they might start to decide to start using social media and they could be quite vulnerable. So this is a nice, a really nice course to help young people to stay safe online, to understand internet safety and security. There's a lot of nice ones in, in that category as well. 
again, you can visit here and, and you can take a look at this yourself. We have some nice modules based around communication and numeracy, and you'll see with those, there's an introduction and then a progression module for both of those topics, but both quite important topics. Coming down the left-hand side, there's some lovely um, modules based around creative. I see a lot of this when it comes through to me, um, when I'm certificating my schools, a lot on photography, a lot on music and craft making, really nice. There was a gentleman in the audience this morning that mentioned his son, I think it was, that was very interested in animal care. We have that contained within what we call work-related activities. Work awareness is a, a general work module, and we're revamping that to include so much, including interviews and, and, and things like that. It's getting a complete revamp, that, that particular module. And what you also have here are some vocationally specific work areas. So things like working in care or catering or in retail or in a salon. Really nice activities for a young person to work through to develop their employability skills. There are some nice ones here, including history and geography on cultural. And then really, I guess, where it's really at. These are so popular. I have so many of my schools offering these independent living modules. So you can see independent living is featured with an introduction and progression. But then I see so many on things like meal preparation, understanding money. That is being looked at, by the way. Um, I don't know about you and, and in your country, but here I, I very rarely use money now. Everything for me is sort of contactless. I, I, I can tap my phone here or there and pay for things just in my own little way. So I don't use I don't use money, but it is important for young people to understand money. And that's the purpose of those of those modules. And you can see here at the bottom of this category, a really nice one on travel training and understanding and using transport. I'll stay on the left. There's some nice ones on uh, leisure recreation. I think it's always good to stay healthy and fit and, and, and do those kind of activities. And then this shaded area on the right hand side, we talked about sensory learners earlier. There's been a range of modules written for sensory learners. But they are really nice, really nice modules. Now, if I were to, um, oh, how do I get out of here? This is important. Um, try and get back to my website, sorry. I did confess earlier, actually, that I'm not the best Zoom expert in the world. I hardly use this uh, this platform, but I'm trying to get back to my website. So, sorry, I'm going to just stop sharing again. And I need to bring up a website, Darren. Okay. Um, coming back to you. All right, so look, that is a, um, a host of information about Towards Independence. We've just taken a look at the, the module list. Now, I'm still not signed into the website. I'm just a website visitor, just like you can be. Um, and what you can do here, if you really liked the look of any of those modules, then here alphabetically you can download some sample pages from all 70 plus books if you so wished so if you really had a passion for animal care or that e-safety module that we with, that we mentioned earlier then you can take a look at any of them it will certainly not give you the whole book it will give you a flavor 
of what just some of the sections from the book actually look like. Now, we do, we are a, an awarding organization. Um, we work with schools, colleges, and training providers. Um, so information on getting started is all here on our website. It, it talks about really becoming a member, becoming a NASDAQ member, and then you can access all of these, all of these courses that I've talked about today. The courses I've mentioned have been really from around about nine years old through to adulthood, really. But if you're working with younger people, we do have what's called Life Skills Challenge. And this is, I think, an excellent course. It's the last one I'm going to mention to you today. But Life Skills Challenge is, is a course that is suitable for any age and any ability of learner. That is inclusive, okay? Any age and any ability. You will follow this link to take you to hopefully what you're looking at now, the Life Skills Challenge website. And what you'll find on here is um, quite a bit of information, actually. If I just click on training, we do offer training, but here, look, are a whole host of YouTube videos that you can watch. Just to give you an idea, they're not, they're not long videos, they're really not, but just give you an idea of how to implement Life Skills Challenge. There's a challenge bank. Now, this challenge bank is over 2,700 challenges. The beauty of this course as well is that you can actually write your own challenges and submit them. We'll check them and we'll add them to the challenge bank. So there might be something quite specific in your part of the, your part of the world um, where you might want to write your own challenge. Well, you're right. You might want to write your own challenge. Sorry, my my two dogs are trying to join in the presentation at the moment, which is really uh, really nuts. But the challenges have all been written firstly and put into subject areas. So these are all pretty much what they say on the tin. We have personal, social, and health education challenges here, and relationships and sex education challenges that have been written into subject areas. Challenges that have been put into those four pathways that I mentioned to you earlier. Really important for learners with special educational needs to be engaging in education and training in those four pathways. Some on vocational. Computing is really popular, as is hair and beauty. And then some challenges which have just been written to develop certain skills. If you said to me, what is ASDAN all about? I would say skill development. And if you said, what skills, Darren? I'd say these six, these are what we call the six ASDAN skills. And if you think about it, someone who can learn, someone who's pretty good with computing, someone who has got a reasonable level of literacy and numeracy. If they can solve problems and work well as part of a team, we are talking there about a pretty good employee. They are broad, I admit, they are broad, but they are really broad employability skills. And it's those skills that will help young people not only to get to a job interview, but perhaps have the confidence to get through the job interview and hopefully then the skills to hold down that job throughout their life. Okay, so what we've covered is the Preparing for Adulthood programs, which have been around for a long time. Um, they have really stood the test of time, is what I would say. I'm going to stop and come back to rejoin you, I hope. Courses which have really stood the test of time. And in my 15 years with ASDAM, I have never heard a teacher or a school be critical about the content of those courses. They are absolutely 
fit for purpose. They do what they are supposed to do, ultimately to give young people the skills to be able to thrive in, in, in their lifetime throughout learning and into adulthood. Secondly, we covered um, life skills challenge, remembering any age, any ability. You really can capture all learners with that course. Challenges have been written at different levels so that you can pitch the right challenges for the right learners. Um, all of what I've talked about today comes with certificates of achievement, not qualifications. They are not regulated qualifications. They are what we call um, as Dan accredited program. So they are an accreditation, but not a qualification. And we've looked at our website where you know that you can get a little bit more information from about anything that I've spoken about today. And also through Kimberly. She's my, my friend in the room today. Kimberly is um, a very successful centre coordinator at Anthos House. It is a registered as Dan Centre and offers our courses. And Kimberly is the person that coordinates all of that. So, like I said, website for a bit more information or go for a chat with, with Kimberly as well. She's um, she's very knowledgeable and she's got hopefully some information that can be passed on to you as, as well. All right. I don't know quite what time is now because we sort of slipped with timings a little bit, but I'm heading towards my... 45 minutes, I think, and I did want to build in a little bit of time just in case anybody did have any questions. So I will um, I will start by saying quite a common question at this point is, you know, what do these certificates do? Do they get young people into university? Do they swing open university doors? No, is the answer to that question. These are person-centered courses. They are, they are courses which will help a young, a young person to develop some skills, skills for learning, skills for independence, skills for life, and skills for employment. So that is what the courses are there for, person-centered, not to, not to um, move on to the next step of, of, of university as such. But if anybody's got any questions, then I think we have a few minutes to be able to answer any questions that you might have. I'm happy to take a question either through a microphone or if somebody wants to type one into the chat function. If there aren't any questions, then I will just summarize by saying um, thank you for listening. It's been a real pleasure to join you. And like I said, I've really enjoyed the um, the enthusiasm. Um, I wish I really were. I wish I really were there with you all today. But it is what it is. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with your sunshine and your beautiful weather whilst I sit here in, in the rain of England, um, wondering when the sun's actually going to show itself at some point. Um, thank you so much for, for listening and thank you for inviting me. And I wish you all a, um, a really good conference to uh, enjoy for the rest of, of today. So two days you've been doing so um you must be really enjoying it, I hope. And uh, like I say, I hope you enjoy the rest of, of what's to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your messages. That's really, really, really helpful. Thank you. Community sensitization. You may have to just expand on that one for me, please, if, if you don't mind. I would say anything community-based is it, it, it can be applied in any community. Certification is for learners, um, but when teachers do our training courses, they are also certificated. So um, a, a teacher can do a training course with us and receive that certificate. That is a training endorsement for the teacher, not the school. It will follow them 
throughout their career. I've known teachers that have put ASDAN training on their CV and, um, and they've been able to get a job because of the fact that Sorry, I got muted and then unmuted. Um, if one is involved in educating community, community leaders quite often are um, volunteering or showing some kind of leadership um, leadership skills. We do have courses, not the ones I've talked about today, but we have other courses that can accredit um, leadership activities and volunteering activities. We have two of those. How do we pay for courses? It is um, it is through membership. If you go through the membership uh, function that we looked at and go to international membership, prices for membership are there and prices for courses for students are also there. Can schools collaborate with you to adapt these modules in their own schools, communities? Yes, you can. Um, nothing is overly prescriptive. Things can be applied. So, for example, um, the the modules based around money can be applied in your currency. You you tweak things, you make them work that way. Can a teacher apply for training as an individual? Yes, you can. You'd have to set up an account with ASDAN so that um, the training can be invoiced to you. But it is, it is possible. It's not common. Usually a school will send their teachers to us for training, um, but it is possible for an individual. That is, that is, that's true to say. Do you have an ASDAN centre in Nigeria? Yes. Go speak to Kimberly. She's there with you today. Um, and Kimberly will talk to you about Anthos House and the work that she's doing there with her special educational needs students. Right to scroll. Thank you for the hand clap. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, it's been lovely to uh, to speak to you. Like I said, it would be much nicer to be there. Can you hear me, please? Me? I can hear you. You can, you can hear me, me now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Please, let's, let's put our hands together, first, first of all, all for, that for that wonderful, wonderful presentation, presentation. Giving, giving us the hands and approach to, to um, the topic. The topic. Thank, you Thank you very, very much. much. And we'll, we'll appreciate your, uh, how do I say it now? Your comment about the vibes in the house. Thank you. So we also feel your vibes. So we feel your energy. We feel your energy. All right. All right. If you're ready to ask your question now, we can take it. He can hear you now. But there's an echo. Can we reduce this echo? I think we've done. We have done a lot of question and answer. So maybe I think my house person who wants to ask you question. Okay. If you're here. Fire away. All right, my question, question is, my name is David. David. Hello, David. All right, all right. So, so my question, question is, first of all, um, the programs, are they free? free? Because um, you did not um, talk about ASDAM as um, a foundation that offer free training. So we want to know that. And secondly, even though Kimberly has actually answered the question that um, the program is it meant for um, the trainers or the teachers alone or for the children. So we want you to throw more light on that. Thank you. OK, sorry. Um, it's quite difficult to cover everything in the in the sort of time that I that I had there. Um, the brochure that's in the room that Kimberly has and we can send you an e-copy of that. That contains um, information about membership. Membership, it, 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 you pay for membership and you pay for the courses in terms of the, the books for the students. So the courses I've mentioned today, all ASDAN courses, they are for students. 
Okay, the students will take part in New Horizons, Transition Challenge, Towards Independence, Work Right, or Life Skills Challenge. And like I said, we have many others as well, many, many more. So learners will take part in those courses and then we will certificate them. So the students get the New Horizons certificate or the Towards Independence certificate. What was mentioned earlier about staff training, yes, we offer training for staff. We don't work with students directly. So my job is to support school staff, college staff, or staff from a, tra a training provider. I train the staff and they then apply the courses to the learners in their, in their setting. It's been quite nice actually, because I started out teaching and I thought I was in a classroom having a real nice impact on 15 or 20 students. I then got promoted and I managed maybe around about 11 staff who were all in classrooms. So my impact became much wider. And I can't believe now that I look after around 600 schools that have staff with children in classrooms. So the impact now is, is, is at thousands, gone from 15 to thousands, literally thousands. So it's been really nice. But that is my job is to work with school staff and um, I train them and then they can deliver the courses and my job throughout that is to support what they do. A big part of my job is to support teachers. Okay, we will have one more question in the house. Please hold on. Tell us your name and you ask your question. Um, good afternoon. My name is Olakunle Adeyemo. Let's take um, an example, your animal training. Because I've gone through the website and I saw the animal part of it. Now, the, the trainings, will it be um, kind of like uh, practical oriented, whereby the uh, students, after they, after they finish the training, can they use, uh, apart, I, I understand the fact that you said that the um, certificates are as done accredited. But at the end of the training, with the skills that they've acquired, Will participants be able to work in, let's say, uh, a vet office or something like that? What I would say to you is it cannot do any harm. If they've done an animal care course with ASDAN and they have that on their CV, imagine the impact that that could have in the job interview to start with. They will have something to talk about an accreditation, maybe a portfolio of evidence of all of the activities that they've done and a certificate as well. That has got to serve somebody well going into a job interview into that particular sector. However, it is not a qualification that carries points as such that's going to actually open the door. You're not going to get a guaranteed job because of that certificate, but it cannot do any harm. Um, and it's all about, you know, learning new things with animals, gaining the skills, um, gaining some knowledge. So it can only be good. It can only be, be a good thing without it being a qualification. But actually, when you think about it, does a qualification get you a job? It can get you to the interview process, can't it? But, you know, actually landing that job, you're not going to do that just because of a qualification. You're going to do it through a number of things. And it's going to be your your communication skills throughout an interview and how well you come across an interview and how you're describing your experiences at an interview. That's what's going to get you the job. So, like I say, an animal care course for a young person looking to go into that sector that field of employment, it can only be a good thing. I will take notes of these um, these email addresses, actually, um, and, and try with Kimberly to get the, uh, the copy of the booklet to you. It's a brochure that contains information about all of the courses, not just what I've spoken about today. Are there any other questions? Okay. Kimberlyn, you're saying something? As Darren was saying, he sent me a brochure. I have hard copies of it and I have soft copies. 
So if you would like one of the brochures that he's talking about, just please come and see me and I can forward it to you by WhatsApp or I can email it to you or you can take a copy with you. Thank you Kimberly. Kimberly, thank you. You're a star. Okay, if there are no more questions, we'd like to say thank you to you, Doreen, for sharing with us your 50 years experience working with Ashdan. And we are thankful for your thoughts on uh, guiding individuals with cognitive di difficulties towards fulfilling their careers. We have really been blessed with the thoughts that you have shared. Let's put our hands together as we celebrate it. Thank you very much.